Hi everyone, welcome to the Smart Grid Seminar. This is the last one uh, for this quarter. Uh, at the end of this uh, presentation, we also talk about the uh, seminars for next quarter. Uh, so our speaker today is Professor uh, Bolan Su from Columbia University. Before we introduce him, I would like to go over some of the uh, features that you can use uh, during the presentation. So you can use the chat feature to communicate uh, any technical difficulty, difficulties to us. So you, for example, if you cannot uh, hear the speaker, you can uh, let us know. And you can use raise hand if you have a clarification question uh, during the presentation. Uh, and if you have any in-depth questions, you should uh, use the Q&A feature and all the questions will be addressed and answered at the end of the presentation. Now, this is the list of uh, speakers who have visited us uh, online, at least this quarter. So I, I just want to remind everyone that the presentations were recorded. So if you miss any of the pre presentations, you can view the video. Uh, professor Bolan Su is an assistant professor of earth and environmental engineering at Columbia University. He is also affiliated with the E department and is a core member at the uh, Electromechanical Energy Center. His research areas are on design and operation of sustainable energy systems, spanning from battery modeling to your city market design. Uh, he received his PhD from University of Washington, Seattle, and he was a postdoc at MIT before joining Columbia University. Uh, yeah, let's welcome the speaker. Uh, uh, Professor Su, you can share your slides. Okay, okay, yeah, sharing um, right now. And uh, thanks, Ching Wu, um, for, the, for the introduction, and, and thanks everyone, everyone for attending. Are, are you seeing my uh, slide or my presentation? Presenter view. Oh, I guess the slides. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon. I'm very glad to be here and uh, talk uh, about um, my research. And it really covers um, the work I started since my PhD and to my postdoc and even some of my very recent work here at Columbia uh, on doing operation and lifetime evaluation. Um, for 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 battery, okay. Okay, so um, battery, 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 right? Battery is becoming a key topic and the start of the show for the future energy system, and it has many different applications. All right, um, the most popular one is battery powers electric vehicle, right? And now many uh, region, uh, California and and the countries, UK, have declared uh, our targeting date. Uh, that ban the sale of traditional fuel vehicles. Right? Um, battery is also a key enabling technology to improve the utilization uh, to integrate renewable energy, right? Uh, by charge and discharge, it mitigates the fluctuation from wind and solar. Um, another interesting uh, development with battery is it, it actually demonstrate, uh, show, uh, uh, proved to be a very reliable resource for improving uh, the, the power system reliability and resilience. And, and in industry, this is called non-wire alternative, and especially in some rural areas of mountain or coastal areas, and better is showing to be more cost-effective uh, than building a new transmission line. And, and better is also much more resilient to extreme weather, like right? wildfire or, um, or, or hurricane. And also we will uh, see a dramatic increase of behind the meter batteries. And these batteries will uh, including electric vehicle. And this will provide vast opportunities to provide demand response program. As some of you, uh, some of you may know, there is a very recent development from FERC, uh, FERC order 2222, which encouraged um, and the, the participation of demand aggregation in electricity markets. So here, let's take a quick uh, overview of what benefit battery is bringing us. Sustainability, okay. Battery is making our, our system more sustainable um, by integrating renewable energy. Also reliability, um, battery is making 
uh, our grid more reliable. Okay. And so the third pillar here in power system design operation is um, the economics, right? And here the key focus of my research and also this talk is how do we improve um, the economic utilization of battery resources in the grid. Uh, and, and this is essentially a problem of valuation, dispatch, and control. Okay. So let's take a, a step back and, and just a quick review of what is, uh, how, what does economics mean in power system? And the basic, the most basic concept here is economic dispatch. Okay. And many, and many of you may be familiar with this concept. It's basically we are uh, figuring how to use multiple generators to meet the demand. And each of the generator has a cost curve and also has incremental cost curve, right? And then we can formulate this into either linear programming or make similar linear programming problem. The objective is to minimize the total generation cost. And we have constraints, right? Supply, demand balance, unit constraints, network security, etc. Okay, and this is a traditional um, uh, definition uh, of a generator-based economic dispatch. And now we would like to uh, see how do we uh, include battery into this framework. Okay, and 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 and, and in a very high level, the solution is pretty intuitive. You add battery into the constraint, and you uh, add battery operating cost uh, into the objective function, right? But, but this is just a high level overview, but in detail, th this may not be so trivial as it seems, right? So let's start from uh, the constraint first, right? So battery, are, uh, uh, depending on various technology, are very have very complicated electrochemical process going inside the battery, but seen from the power system perspective, battery are actually very uh, simple devices to model, right? It doesn't have complicated ramping or other you know, governance dynamics, no mean up on time, no uh, no minimum generation limit, right? It's just a power rating, right? The power the rating of the power electronic device. Um, and well, energy rating, right? Energy dynamics, the change in the stored energy equals to uh, the energy of charge or discharge, and also efficiency, right? It can either be a constant or it can even be a piecewise linear approximation. Now here, this is a, 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 a recent paper just showing how um, uh, the seemingly complicated battery charge and discharge efficiency dynamics can be uh, uh, represented using piecewise linear approximation. So we can very uh, easily formulate battery operation constraints into a, a, a linear programming framework and put into economic dispatch. Okay. However, to characterize the cost, operating cost of a battery, it's not so trivial. Okay. And here we are looking at two uh, components. One is capacity opportunity cost, right? right? Battery has limited capacity and actually compared to most other resources in the power system, it has a very, very limited capa uh, capacity, usually one, uh, one to four hours, right? And that means to operate the battery, we must plan ahead and determine what need, what we need to do now based on the future expectation of the price. Now here are two examples. Uh, in the upper price here, uh, we have a relatively high, somewhere around $100, but pretty flat price uh, profile. Okay, now, so this would be a good day for a generator because for, for a conventional generator, if the price is higher than the generator fuel cost, um, you know, I, I just generate. But for battery, um, there's not so much profit but opportunity, but the battery, profit uh, not by generating energy but for arbitraging price differences okay on, on the lower plot here we have much lower average price somewhere lower than 50 percent uh, 50 dollar per megawatt hour but this would be a pretty nice day for a battery because well uh, there's high fluctuation right especially here during these a few uh, um, 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 uh, price valleys and uh, the battery would would be it would be very good opportunity for battery to charge and then later it has the opportunity to sell this energy charge here at somewhere around fifty dollar per megawatt hour right so this is uh what we mean by capacity opportunity right so it's a trade-off to save your capacity now now or use it and, and sell your energy later right so this is the capacity uh, opportunity 
On the other hand, we have um, degradation, right? And some of you may heard of this term before. Uh, that this basically means for a battery, it's an electrochemical device. The useful energy capacity uh, decreases slowly with time and with cycling, meaning charge and discharge. Okay, so I guess we all have uh, a phone, okay, an iPhone or, or, or any other uh, phone, and we all know how the battery looks after two or three years of use, right? And even now, uh, iPhone even has a, uh, a, a has the function to estimate the remaining lifetime of your battery in your, your phone, okay? But here, uh, I have an example um, battery warranty, and it's very similar to the ones I saw uh, in the industry, is, well, um, the, the warranty will specify that your battery has a 10-year calendar life, okay? You, if you do not use the battery at all, it lasts for 10 years, uh, or uh, if you use the battery cycle, one cycle per day, it lasts for five years. And at, by the end of the warranty, it guarantees you to have 80% remaining capacity, right? And there is even a fancier way to define this, where you get 10 calendar, uh, 10 years of warranty days for a battery, uh, and then every cycle you perform reduce uh, the, the, your warranty time by one day, okay? And how do we, uh, how does uh, degradation impact our economic decision, okay? Uh, and, and, and here, it's again an opportunity. Right, but it's not no longer opportunity of capacity, it's opportunity of your lifetime, right? It's again a trade-off. If you if I cycle my battery now, I got my money now uh, or, or, or any other benefit, but the uh, the drawback here is I have less capacity to use in the future and I shorten my battery lifetime. Okay. And the here is a uh, Figure uh, uh, from a battery testing data from one of our earlier publications that really shows uh, the remaining battery capacity is crucially dependent on how you use the battery, how, how, how the battery uh, charge and discharge. So it's very correlated, highly correlated with the battery operation. Okay. And so here's the problem we have capacity opportunity cost, we have lifetime opportunity cost, um, um, how and um, they are. Uh, um, and they are correlated, and how do we uh, 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 get the value uh, of both of them, right? And here, uh, I'm just do a quick uh, summary and a, a, a bottom-up introduction on this problem. We start, right, with a daily operation, uh, uh, which considers short-term capacity opportunity cost model, right? Which we have the pricing signal for the day, we, we put it in, and it generates the revenue and the control out of it, right? So this is for one day. And also we can go one day prior, right? This is from the one day prior. And also these two days are, are, are weekly coupled. So energy you left from yesterday is the energy you start with from today, right? And also the day before yesterday and go on and on and on, right? And this is a coupled uh, uh, sequential operation problem. And it's also similar, it's a very similar problem to inventory management or even uh, or, or hydro uh, storage planning, okay, high, pump hydro storage. But what's unique about battery is the degradation model, right? Uh, so all this operation we perform will cause incremental degradation right, in the battery. And also the remaining capacity of the battery will be impacted. Uh, and, and, and that will also impact how you operate the battery here and here and here, right? And this is another layer of coupling. Um, and this is unique uh, in, in electrochemical batteries and this uh, and our long-term, by, uh, by long-term life opportunity cost, we are trying to capture all of these interactions, right? To capture the opportunity value of the battery degradation, okay? Right, and here is a summary um, of, of, of the three blocks we considered here. I think this really uh, is a good uh, summary of, of the work, uh, I, I, of the research, a main focus of my research since my PhD, especially during my PhD, I worked a lot on degradation modeling. And then during my postdoc at MIT, uh, I spent a lot of time doing the short-term battery operation. And here uh, during my uh, recent time at Columbia, uh, Columbia uh, mostly during the COVID lockdown, um, uh, also got some very interesting results on long-term lifetime opportunity costs, right? But let's just start step by step and from the very basic 
uh, degradation model here, right? And the degradation model basically takes in uh, the lifetime opportunity cost and has an input and translate that into an operating cost for the short-term capacity um, um, uh, evaluation, okay? Uh, however, we, we, we have to start somewhere, right? We don't know the lifetime opportunity cost yet, but remember, this is the model. So technically, it can work with any um, any uh, number, right? Any number opportunity cost. And here, uh, a preliminary approach we take is to use, uh, to, con to prorate the battery replacement cost as um, the value of lifetime, right? And this is, actually a very common approach in the industry and also used by many other publications. And just a quick example here, we have the battery degradation curve. This is the incremental battery life loss. And, and this is a nonlinear function with respect to how deep you cycle the battery, right? This is from the degradation from single cycle, right? So we have the life loss here and we have the cell replacement, uh, replacement cost here. And we multiply them together, we get the cost of degradation, right? So we have this, and following this uh, this assumption, right, and we will revisit this topic later. And uh, we uh, we did a, 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 a modeling and um, a, a piece by similar approximation to a nonlinear uh, degradation model to in, to model battery degradation in uh, optimization. And this is a joint work uh, with folks at ISO in England. Right? Uh, so we did a piece by linear approximation. Okay. And and, 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 and and eventually we convert the nonlinear cycle battery and cycle degradation model into a linear programming that uh, can be used in any of my different problems. And we use, we test this using a very simple um, arbitrage example, which we have the, where we have the price data here. And here uh, is the seat of charge response, the resulting seat of charge from the arbitrage using different uh, resolutions. Okay, uh, using different Approxi uh, level approximation, uh, in which we can see with uh, a, a higher number of, our, uh, of segments, okay, um, uh, the operation start to be more responsive to the small price variation, where right? you have big cycle with big price change, while you also, on top of that, you also have small cycle responding to small price variation because of the nonlinear here, linearity here. And, 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 and our model achieves, uh, uh, a diminishing error compared to the benchmark nonlinear model um, with more number of approximation blocks. Okay. Uh, another work uh, uh, I'd like to briefly talk about is uh, a work um, with actually with Falson. Uh, some some of you may know him, and on, on incorporating battery degradation into control and specifically specifically tracking control, right? And this for frequency regulation. Um, in which you, the battery was supposed to follow frequency regulate a stochastic signal, um, but the arrow, right, the arrow in the, in, in the response will be charged for a penalty, right? And we show that the optimal response is really a threshold policy on the state of charge. So you just follow the signal until you reach uh, an upper and lower bound, okay? And we show that this threshold can actually be analytically calculated um, using uh, the, the market tariff and the degradation mechanism. And intuition is really when you follow the signal, you have degradation cost. If you don't follow the signal, you have penalty. And that's a trade off there, again, due to the nonlinearity in the degradation, okay? And we squeeze out uh, a two, actually two <laughs> publications out of this. One focused on um, frequency participation in frequency regulation market, and the other is on, uh, on the control policy itself. Which although it's pretty elegant here, it actually take a, a quite 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 amount of effort to to prove, okay, to do the proof. So that's for the degradation model, and let's move on to the next component, which is the short term capacity opportunity cost model. Okay, so what is the value of the short what is, uh, of the capacity of the storage of the energy stored in the battery? And, and there are definitely many different frameworks and ways we can show this, but I just want to um, today talk about a pretty interesting work I did uh, when I was at MIT. It's using a stochastic dynamic programming framework to do this. And for those of you who are familiar with uh, dynamic programming, you, you will know the dynamic programming itself 
is a valuation framework because we need to get a value function of the state. And the state here is the battery state of charge. So we automate by doing a dynamic programming, we automatically get uh, the value function for the storage. Okay. And here, just a quick summary about the formulation. And uh, this is the st single stage uh, uh, of my uh, objective function subject to power in a state of charge limits. Uh, we have a single stage profit, the arbitrage profit, and also the cost of degradation, and also the, uh, the, the value to go function, right, uh, uh, from, from, from the future. Okay. And for stochastic dynamic programming, it's really um, the optimized uh, value here um, uh, uh, goes into the expectation function, right? And, and then our, our value depends on the expectation uh, for the future profit. And, and this here, the stochastic rival is the price lambda, which is the real-time market price. Okay. And this is um, 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 basically um, the stochastic dynamic programming framework here. Okay. And just a quick uh, uh, over uh, um, intro on stochastic dynamic programming. And for folks who worked with stochastic dynamic program before. Uh, I think uh, we all know this is not a very pleasant experience, and um, simply because inherent complexity, right? And the, the combination of uncertainty and the state just uh, just 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 uh, uh, blow up exponentially, right? Especially for real-time price arbitrage, uh, we have five-minute market clearing, so 288 uncertainty stages per day, right? And here, just a quick overview uh, review about some prior method I'm showing, solving, uh, solving stochastic dynamic programming. One is Markov uh, decision process, right? Where you, where you map um, your action as a, uh, based on your states, okay? And also following this Markov decision process, we also have reinforcement learning, okay? Also use Markov decision process and also approximate uh, dynamic program, okay? but. But here, a, a, a big uh, limitation from uh, MVP-based approach is it's very uh, it, it's inaccurate to model efficiency uh, because the battery has a non-ideal efficiency, you know, ninety-two percent, ninety-three percent, ninety-four percent. It's it's really difficult to be captured by transition of discretized states. Okay, or you can do a very fine granularity of states, but that will increase your computation. Uh, expense quite quite a lot. Okay, and on the on the other hand, there's another algorithm uh, called stochastic do dynamic programming, and this is actually the classic algorithm for scheduling uh, hydro storage. Okay, pump hydro storage, uh, which which is actually a, a more complicated problem than battery because um, for hydro storage scheduling, we also have many environmental temperature factors, right? Uh, the inflow or even the, the flow, the, 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 the salmon, the migrate of salmon if you live in Washington state, okay. Uh, but still, SDDP is in many cases computationally expensive, okay. Um, it just need to do, still do a lot of iteration back and forth, okay. And here are some of the prior literatures that have tackled on this problem, okay. But for the algorithm here, the proposed algorithm is this study, is we develop a analytical algorithm okay, tailored to storage price arbitrage. Okay, the specialized algorithm, uh, and we use a piecewise linear approximation to the value function. And as a result, we don't need to discretize anything. No discretization of states, control, or distribution of the of, of the uncertainty. Okay. And here, this is a, a quick summary of the of the technical. Approach we do we did this, uh, and, and, and and the and the main um, theory we used is it's the same uh, theory foundation to stochastic do dynamic program is which do decomposition, uh, uh, which we uh, decompose uh, the do with respect to set of chart evolution constraint right and and, and we use the relationship between these two sub problem uh, to derive uh, uh, to derive the analytical. Uh, representation of the distribution of small Q, which is the derivative of your profitability of your profit. Okay, the big Q here is the maximize the profit, your stage-wise maximize profit. And here, this is the derivative of it. And we are able to show it is a closed form uh, distribution function directly based on 
the distribution of the price. Okay. And just know that here we have a, a gradient update rule, and I'm just want to clarify that we use this uh, for the proof, not for designing the algorithm itself, right? We we use this as a, 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 a as a, a way to prove uh, this rule. Okay. And as a result, um, our um, so we have the distribution, and then by taking the expectation, we can analytically categorize uh, the derivative of the value function. Okay, the small v, right? Uh, has has a function of the value function uh, derivative from the next time period, right? Because in dynamic term, it works backwards. So this is a function. This is a result from our prior step. Okay, and also um, a function of the price distribution function, right? CDF, PDF, and this is uh, this integral here is basically the um, the conditional expectation. Okay, and also storage co coefficient, uh, cost, efficiency, power limit. Okay, and although this function looks pretty uh, pretty ugly, pretty complicated, it's actually very uh, simple to calculate. You know, it, it, this is uh, this is basically uh, uh, can be, can be finished but can be calculated on the most uh, software or hardware platform. The advantage here is uh, we don't need to discretize anything. Uh, so the, 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 the proof doesn't assume, especially no discretization of distribution, right? We can deal with distribution function directly in its analytical form, or you can use samples, right? Uh, in that you have discretized, you, you have discrete distribution function. It has extremely fast computation speed with one backwards shift. You just start from the last time period, go backwards, you solve the problem uh, for and also, it has very simple hardware requirement uh, or software. So as long as you can finish this computation, um, you're good to go. Okay. You can implement anywhere. And, and also, we have a current limitation. Is we still assume statewide independent distribution of the price, which is uh, uh, not realistic. But you know, uh, but based on our um, preliminary uh, computation performance, we're pretty confident that this can be easily adopted into more complicated statewide dependent distribution. Now here, this is a comparison with the benchmark SDDP um, uh, solution in solving uh, arbitrage with 24 uncertainty stages. Uh, and here, we use 24, not 288. Is uh, at least this the SDDP cannot solve 288 stages on my computer. Right? Uh, so I have to do 24. And here, we see uh, we consider different number of state uh, price. Uh, Price nodes or different number of uncertainty nodes per stage. Okay, and the solution time for SDDP uh, goes up uh, to nearly an hour, right? But with our method, um, it, it, everything is solved somewhere around um, um, below 25 milliseconds, okay, which is a huge improvement. And also, the two methods achieve identical performance in exposed Monte Carlo simulations based on the derived value function. Okay. And here, this is a case study of the battery and um, the value of the battery capacity on the on the different price uh, uh, deviations. Okay. And, and so here, we have uh, uh, we have price uh, uh, series. Uh, they have price also different. Um, uh, we model real time price has a normal distribution around it with different standard deviations, which give us uh, different value of the energy stored in the battery. Okay. And just to note here, this is the value of energy stored in the battery, not the battery profit, right? If you if you show the battery profit, higher um, price deviation will give you much higher profit. Okay. But here, this is how much uh, is the energy worth, uh, how, how much worth is the energy stored in my battery. And, that, and it also shows the interesting that with higher price deviation, uh, the, the energy stored in the battery versus more. It's kind of interesting because the US, we because the, the expectation of all these prices are, are 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 the same. So if you think if you only think about one stage, right? You you store you have energy stored in the battery and you want to sell them in the next time period, you, you, your profit should uh, be uh, your expected profit should be uh, the expected price times your energy. Right? But here if we consider multi-stage uncertainty, it does show a difference here that battery values more uh, with higher uncertainty. And another advantage 
here is this curve can be directly used as the to design bidding curve into the uh, into the electricity market for battery okay which is pretty difficult to achieve uh, which in, with, with um, uh, markup decision process based uh, methods okay so we have a um, liquidation model we have short-term uh, operation model and let's go back to where we started uh, the long-term life uh, opportunity cost model right i just bring everybody back by long-term life opportunity uh, we mean uh, it's a trade-off between use your battery now and shorten its lifetime or save your battery do use it now and you get a little bit longer lifetime right it's again a trade-off problem and it turned out this problem has not been uh, very commonly studied and in fact the, the first and the only uh, publication to my knowledge is written by actually a very good friend of mine and uh, we both worked at mit uh, Dr. Guan and He, uh, he's still at MIT now, and, and he published his paper in Nature Energy that tackled uh, this problem. But there's a, a theory because we are targeting a very long term operation here, there's some inherent computation difficulty. And he has to make, he made an assumption here that uh, the, the marginal cost of battery degradation, or the incremental cost of battery degradation, is a time invariant life state independent. Uh, term okay, um, but here um, uh, if we introduce a dynamic, a supposedly a more accurate dynamic programming framework into this, uh, we, we do show that this number, this degradation cost, is highly kind, okay, and life dependent, right? Okay, so it's still it's still dynamic programming. <laughs> it's just another. Uh, another version of dynamic programming here to do the valuation of lifetime okay and here we start with the daily operating problem and now the hour value function is no longer the value of the stored energy but the value of uh, remaining battery lifetime okay or the remaining battery capacity so we have uh, the battery uh, the, ba uh, the battery uh, revenue from the operating day okay uh, and here we're still targeting arbitrage uh, application, but essentially it can be any uh, battery operations that can, as long as it can be formulated as a convex problem, right? It can be anything. But here we just focus still for simplicity, we use arbitrage, okay? Uh, and when we have, we get revenue, okay, from, from today, right? From today, day N, uh, by operating battery. And the battery operation um, passing through a cycle degradation model generates tells us what's the incremental degradation uh, of the capacity. Uh, what's the change in, in my lifetime uh, in, in the in the remaining capacity of the battery? And this uh, goes into the future battery value. Okay, and and then we do a trade off between our profit now today and the remaining value of, of the battery. Right, and this is the daily operating problem. And then also we have a outer loop uh, or the intraday value function update model because the optimized value here, okay, is, 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 is essentially the optimized battery value from today, okay, to the project deadline. Okay. We assume there's a deadline of the battery project that after that, uh, 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 the battery project has to be terminated, okay. And then we can even add some complicating factors uh, into this, right? Like calendar degradation, your battery, uh, there's a calendar degradation component in battery degradation that even you don't use your battery, it still loss a little bit of lifetime every day. And, and, and I was looking up at daily discount ratio, right? Um, the, the money tomorrow versus a little bit less uh, seen from today. We can also uh, include a benchmark resale value, right? Uh, of the battery, which means well, uh, we are targeting some battery arbitrage application now, but I can still sell my battery to, to, uh, to say, um, 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 backup power supply or to uh, electric buses, right? Battery is still worth a little bit of money there. So we can even consider a benchmark resale. Uh, I'll show you an example later. Okay. And that will uh, get uh, included into our future value function. Okay. And here is the formulation, 
again, uh, and, and our daily objective is uh, maximize arbitrage income and the remaining value of the battery, right? And here, this is the value function from today, but right? optimize the value here is the value uh, from from today to the future, right? And 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 and, and this will be uh, the value from tomorrow to the future, right? And we add. We can add discount factor to it, right? Daily discount factor. And also if our resale value, a benchmark resale value turned out to be higher than this uh, this term, we use the benchmark resale value. And the physical, uh, and, and practically this basically means uh, we should just sell our battery and terminate the project. Okay. And, and so we have power rating, this is of chart evolution rating. This is pretty standard way to write this. And, 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 and the special constraint here is the battery lifetime evolution. Okay, then I'm where my maximum energy capacity, okay, my battery energy capacity depends on the battery energy capacity from yesterday minus cycle degradation, which is a function of my power, okay, of my power, and also my calendar degradation. It is modeled as a constant value. My battery lost uh, a fixed amount of life uh, of capacity every day, right? And this term uh, define limits how much energy we can charge in this chart. And also this term goes into uh, the value function, okay? For, to for tomorrow. And, and here, uh, uh, this will be our initial state, okay? Which is the uh, energy uh, remain uh, the, uh, the capacity of the battery from yesterday. Okay, and, and so again, this uh, and this this dynamic programming problem is actually solved using a very similar approach to the previous one uh, and using piecewise linear approximation. Right, it looks like I'm really uh, a lover of piecewise linear approximation, uh, but it does show that it, in many cases it's a very good trick to solve many uh, many nonlinear problems. Okay, and I and 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 and, and uh, I'd like to jump uh, to the result directly. Okay, uh, so our solution algorithm is very similar to the previous one. Uh, and uh, here in the simulation setup, is we got we use real time price data from Line in New York from 2010 to 2019. Okay, and we we, we do the simulation backwards on, on, uh, using a deterministic framework. We assume the battery one megawatt, two megawatt battery, and this is uh, a popular setting. For, for grid school battery now, uh, one to one uh, two hour okay battery, eighty five percent round trip efficiency. And here, this is our valuation result, right? And 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 the three D plot showing the value of battery depends on the remaining capacity, right, of the battery, and also we assume the battery lasts for ten years. So 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 the value is also dependent on how many remaining project years we have. Okay, and <coughs> sorry. And at the end of the project, we, what we let is a resale value. And here we assume the resale value to be, uh, we assume we have a battery warranty until reaching 80% liquidation. So that means um, a battery with valid warranty, with still some warranty left, has some priority resale value. And, and once the warranty expires, the battery can still usable until 60% remaining lifetime, but it has no sale value because it, it's no longer have warranty. So this is considered to be a second life battery. Okay. So although here uh, we show the second life battery, you know, the resale value is zero, but if you do the uh, do the valuation, it shows it actually shows that second life battery do worth uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, has with more project uh, uh, duration remain. Okay. And another interesting um, uh, angle to look at is the surplus value, which is we minus the resale value. Okay, we minus the resale value from the total value, which we get um, the difference, right? Which means um, the additional value we can get from this battery from this resale value, right? Which which can assume that we can buy any kind of battery at its resale value, right? And here it does show that once we consider that. And the 80% lifetime, which is the you know the the, the, the newest end of the life battery, the battery that just had a expired warranty, give us the most value here, right? In all scenarios. Okay. 
And of course, you see here, uh, uh, by approaching the battery deadline and with the newer battery, it has zero surplus value, which means here the value is basically dependent on the resale uh, value. Okay. So another uh, uh, good angle to look at this is take, let's look at the incremental degradation cost or the marginal cost. It's basically, you take the derivative, okay, we take the derivative of, uh, um, of this plot, right? And this is the actual, this should be the actual term, the marginal cost of degradation. This will be the actual term to be plugged in into uh, uh, market optimization, right? And it does show here there's a very strong dependency of the marginal cost with respect to the remaining battery capacity, right? A new battery has somewhere around zero to $20 marginal cost, but once the battery approaches end of life, the marginal cost can jump to even five fold or even 10 fold, okay? To even to up to a hundred dollar, uh, somewhere up over a hundred dollar per megawatt hour, right? And this, and all, it also get more sensitive to the price dynamics. And here I'm showing the, um, the 30 day moving average price division in Long Island, right? Uh, and this is 2010 to 2020. Uh, 20. And I can see it's, it's very similar uh, to the shape here. So it's, it's highly coupled, uh, become highly sensitive. Okay. Another very interesting takeaway uh, from this is, is the battery. Uh, 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 we, with, a, with the aged battery, we should use it much more conservatively uh, with a much higher uh, marginal cost. And this is actually very much in line uh, with, the, uh, with, with using second line batteries because the second line battery has higher impedance and also uh, um, uh, less stable internal dynamics. So, we are, we, so physically, we should use it more conservatively. And we also show that economically, we also sort of use it more conservatively. So it's actually a pretty uh, positive result here. Um, that shows that second line battery is really a viable concept here. So we look at Lyland and next thing, I, uh, we just want to compare the battery performance in different price zones. And here we consider four different price zones in New York. And here it shows they have very different dynamics uh, in terms of average price and the price image because they have very different price portfolio. New York State has very strong uh, congestion, uh, south to west, uh, 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 south, uh, sorry, east, east to west, and, and, the nor and north to south. Okay, that causes the price to be very different in the four uh, in, the, uh, in the four zones. Okay, and here uh, is the comparison of the value of of a second line battery versus new battery. And here again, just to remind, um, second line battery. Is the battery dedicated at eighty percent capacity? We, which we assume that uh, no longer has a valid warranty. Okay, and to contain the uncertainty of battery end of life, right? In reality, we are not sure what is the true end of life of battery without a warranty. We assume it can be dis uh, it, it can it distributed uniformly anywhere between seventy five percent and fifty percent. So we assume here end of life is uncertain, and that really uh, shows as a. Um, a, a, a shaded range here. Uh, blue is the second line battery. New is uh, it, 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 it's for new battery. And we also here for new battery, we assume uh, we can still use the new battery after the warranty expires. The new battery covers uh, included the second line battery here. Okay. And also just to be fair, we do not consider resale value anymore, right? So the key takeaway here is uh, you see the battery value is very much dependent on the price realization in the four zones. But the ratio be this, between these two guys, right, between new and second line battery, it's pretty stable in, in, in all these four zones despite they have very different price dynamics. It all shows that uh, the, the value and um, the ratio between second line to new batteries um, goes somewhere um, around 50, 50, 57%, right? All the way to around to nearly 100% and, and when you are approaching battery life deadline. And this is a pretty encouraging result considering first, second line battery doesn't have any, uh, are not supposed to have any resale value compared to new battery. And then even you compare the energy, uh, lifetime energy throughput, right? On every second line, uh, second line battery can only provide less than 40% uh, lifetime energy throughput compared to new battery. Okay, and here, remember, for new batteries, we assume new batteries include the second life portion, right? Uh, 
And, and so this is a, a, a very a preliminary work. I just uploaded to archive this this Wednesday, I believe. Um, um, but I think this is also a pretty promising, uh, encouraging result, especially we have a very new uh, study from, from McKinsey seen by uh, 2030. Uh, our world will have 200 gigawatts of, uh, of second line battery free. Okay. Now let's go back to where we started. We want to include battery into economic dispatch, right? Uh, we develop this valuation framework. We can run the evaluation from framework on some relatively low dimension data, right? Price or, or demand forecast, regulation signal, right? And we have our economic dispatch, which we optimize, uh, uh, we minimize generation costs subject to constraints. And, and, and then we have the value and it's pretty uh, simple here how, that we, how do we uh, include the result into the economic dispatch. It's basically uh, the value function, it, it's a, uh, the cost function is a negative to the value function, right? And if we here we have storage cost and it's a function of battery state of charge and, and battery lifetime, okay? And also the degradation model will go both into constraint and also the objective function. So here we can optimize battery operation using single period real single period real time dispatch, okay, uh, which is basically the existing real time dispatch framework in most system operators, uh, and, and we can directly incorporate this uh, cost function into economic dispatch, or this function can be used to design bidding curves uh, and with supporting market models. And now we are talking about uh, market design. Okay, that's why many people now are talking about market design. Okay, just a little bit of a uh, 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 outlook here. Uh, um, I, I think we talked about a, a, a lot about battery valuation, right? And one of my uh, uh, visions right, on, my, on, my, on my future goal is, is to develop an open source uh, control and evaluation framework for battery storage, right? Including modeling, right? We have all the model we need, operation, uh, tracking problems, model predicting control, stochastic programming, and also evaluation and planning, right? We have the market signal here. Right, and this this really towards uh, the social wide uh, utilization of battery, right? right? Both distributed or even electric vehicle and residential, right? And the key technical enabler here is we should be we are, we are able to solve this using open source algorithm, right? Uh, and with minimal requirement on the software and the hardware, right? We can do this anywhere in, in, in home management devices on electric vehicles, right? And then we can, uh, uh, and this is the main engine of this valuation. And then uh, we can integrate everything into a holistic open source software platform. Okay. Uh, which um, for the utilization of engine storage in every social, uh, 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 every, uh, every setting. Uh, uh, yeah, this will be the end uh, of my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I really want to acknowledge many of my uh, collaborators uh, along the way and also the companies uh, that we work with and, and yeah uh, this will be all uh, for for today okay and i uh, i'm glad to answer any questions uh if you have any questions you can uh use the q a feature to type your questions and you can also unmute yourself if you want to ask the question directly. I see there is one question. Uh, yeah, about the when, resale yeah, value. How is the resale value of first life batteries determined? Yeah. Yeah, here it is uh, 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 an uh, assumption I, I made, uh, but also I think there are some authoritative uh, uh, literature of this is um, a, a new battery versus $200 per kilowatt hour, okay? And then based on the remaining duration of, of the warranty, um, the resale value is prorated, right? Here you have, we have 50, we have half of the warranty left, the battery versus $100 per kilowatt hour, right? And then once your battery, um, it's, 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 uh, the warranty expires, we have no more, um, Resale value. Okay. But, hmm. but on the other hand, uh, I will say this just uh, 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 the framework is able to take into consideration of any um, possible uh, 
um, any possible uh, 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 assumption on, on second like uh, trading value, sorry, resale value. Okay. Uh, there is a second question. Can you talk about uh, the intuition why second life batteries are less economical than new ones? Uh, uh, yeah, so do you mean it's, uh, um, I, I would guess you mean the battery, uh, second life battery. Um, oh, let me go to, oh, maybe it's just here. Uh, second life battery versus less than new batteries, uh, or because uh, we have less lag time um, and, and, and and we have less capacity, right? For new battery in this framework, uh, for example, I can my my battery can I can use my battery from a hundred percent capacity to anywhere between seventy five to fifty percent capacity, right? And that's for new battery or for second life battery. I'm starting uh, at eighty percent, right? I'm starting at eighty percent, right? Uh, so I can uh, and I can arrive. So I have much smaller uh, battery uh, in terms of capacity. And in terms of available lifetime, all right. And and and, and here the intuition for of the second life battery is really uh, aiming uh, about aiming at batteries that are retired from electric vehicles, okay. uh, which um, they probably are are are, are degraded not enough to meet uh, many uh, many many uh, mileage requirements or performance requirement, but they still can have uh, hold, uh, can 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 charge and discharge, which is not good enough for electric vehicle. But still good enough for for electric uh, for electric power system applications. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Uh, okay. I, uh, third. Does the model characterize the value from recycling the battery? For example, Very good point. Good yeah. Yeah. Time to yeah. Recycle. yeah. Yeah. Uh, for uh, yeah, sex analysis. This is a very good point. This is actually part of our uh, ongoing uh, effort. So the recycling is another um, another big topic, right? And, and actually I just talked with some battery people working on, on recycling. So it turns out uh, the battery state of life, right? Whether your battery is at you know, 90%, um, 80%, 70%, 60%, the, the procedure and the quality of the recycling is, is exactly the same, right? So really is think about uh, to, to drink the full potential out of the battery before recycling it, 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 it's a big it's a big thing here right because because it makes no difference to recycling right and on the other hand we are trying to uh, uh, look into the problem further um, in terms of recycling as well as uh, as well as production there's a mining we have many different battery technology and they have many uh, 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 different uh, uh, requirement on the material I think I uh, and, 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 and you may know that cobalt is, is a critical it's the it, it, critical material uh, um, for, for, for AMC or many uh, car batteries to, to prolong the lifetime and stabilizes the battery performance. But, but cobalt has, it has, it's a very limited um, uh, mineral, right? And, and definitely may not be sufficient uh, to power up uh, the power system electrification, uh, sorry, power, sustainable power system in the future, right? So, and so, Really, uh, I think the, uh, one of the uh, futures that we are looking into this is how do we incorporate life cycle, right? Recycle production or even uh, logistics into this framework, so we can uh, profile different battery technology and identify like the, like the best technology uh, uh, for 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 the grid. Okay. Thanks. Uh, there's one more question. Yeah, this is interesting. Do you? Model second life batteries from EV primary usage differently from second life batteries from grid storage primary usage. Oh, good question. Uh, uh, no, in this framework, no. Okay, in this framework, we uh, both the new uh, second life battery we assume it to be uh, operating uh, for grid arbitrage. Okay, so 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 uh, so so it's always grid arbitrage. Uh, um, but uh, as I mentioned, the framework is general. Okay, so 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 here is a day and revenue, but uh, we can uh, insert a different application right into this. We can um, uh, we can uh, add uh, the utilization of or or or, uh, or or benefit of electric vehicle uh, into this. Okay, and. And, and, and so that's, I think that's the economic perspective. And, and then back to your point, I think another perspective here is uh, 
um, battery retired from electric vehicle may be different, right? From from battery uh, battery that has been on the grid is is operating in very different conditions, right? And and also, uh, and, 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 and the electric vehicle supposedly uh, lives in a much more uh, dynamic, less stable environment. So the battery can be different, and, right? And, and again, and you have the battery collected from different cars, they may be different, right? And I think this goes into another very important topic here is uh, for utilizing second life battery is to develop a dynamic adaptive uh, battery management system, right? And right now I believe most battery management systems uh, are still based on, uh, are still basically um, um, lookup tables, right? Based on the manufacturer settings, right? Uh, so I think that is a critical topic, you know, the battery, second life battery, especially those from electric vehicles, they are very diverse, very different, okay? But go back to the one of the results here, the good sign or, the, or, or partly good news is we show that these batteries are, second life batteries should be used very conservatively, right? Uh, so if, if you consider uh, like here, uh, the battery may have a, a marginal production cost of somewhere around uh, 50 to $60. And this is the degradation cost. This is, uh, we have the contained uh, uh, the opportunity, uh, uh, the, the, the capacity opportunity cost yet, right? So if you counting that, we will expect the actual cost, right? The actual operating cost to discharge uh, second lab battery under this from framework, maybe it's likely 80 to $100. So that means the battery are operated very, very conservatively. Uh, only get discharged a few times uh, in the day or even in a week, okay? And then this actually a, a good news to utilize a second life battery, that means the, 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 the operation that we put, okay, on the second life battery is much more simple, simpler, right? Much more conservative than new batteries, which means the second we can do this presumably using a, a, a sloppier uh, BMS, right? And, and, and so this is a multi-factor uh, problem and, and, and I haven't gone into the standard, right? I think there are um, a lot of people discussing we should make more standard about how to diagnose second life batteries. So, so but this is a, a, again, I think this is also a very important topic for the future. So are, are there any more questions? Okay, so uh, Professor Su, thanks for giving such an interesting presentation. Yeah, uh, we look forward to another opportunity when you can visit us in person. Yeah, yeah, thanks Xing Wu uh, yeah. Yeah, for the invitation. And I'm, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to, 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 come, to uh, come to the campus and, and, and see, you, see, you, uh, see you all, right? Okay. Uh, I, I think doc, Dr. Liang Ming has an announcement. That's, uh, uh, are you sharing your screen right now, Professor Su? Yeah, okay. Good. Uh, before I do that, I'd uh, like to uh, thank Borden again uh, for the excellent presentation. So I think uh, next quarter, I'd like to get connect you with uh, some of the researchers we hear uh, doing the research in the degradation model. Um, then, uh, you know, today is the last seminar for this quarter. I'd like to uh, give a special thanks to Dr. Ching Wu Tan and uh, Wahila Wilkie uh, for coordinating and uh, organizing um, the seminar series uh, for this quarter. Really appreciate. And uh, uh, I'd like quickly announce uh, what we're going to have in next quarter. So next quarter, we're going to highlight the Stanford postdoc program. So we will have a uh, five postdocs. Uh, they are doing research with a uh, uh, different professor at Stanford on different topics and uh, uh, power electronic, econ policy, climate change, and uh, uh, power market, etc. And uh, each of them will bring different perspective from their previous organization, universities, or even from different countries. So it will be very exciting uh, seminar series for the next quarter. And uh, we will still deliver the Smart Grid Seminar Series next quarter uh, through the Zoom, through online. And uh, with that, I'd like to wish all the students good luck with your exam and the final report. 
and uh, for all the attendees and uh, happy holidays. Thank you.